eastward across the Mediterranean and Malta bound. The convoy, which recently fought its way to the George Cross Island, sailed under the protecting guns of British battleships and cruisers, aircraft carriers and destroyers. Squadrons of fighter aircraft flew high above cargo ships and escort. Over 50 ships in a column 10 miles wide. A mighty armada hurrying to the island fortress. Early in the action, the aircraft carrier HMS Eagle was torpedoed. Fortunately, the casualties were not heavy. The wounded were brought ashore shortly after the great vessel sank. Her loss was a severe blow. After being issued with clean clothing and feeling a lot more comfortable, the survivors attend a pay parade. Each man has some shore leave coming to him, and for that, they need a bit of dough. It's right, sailor. You can't trick the paymaster. Yes, these are the men of the gallant old eagle. God bless them. Now for the newsreel story of the three-day battle at sea. The whole operation was under the command of Vice Admiral Seyfried. From the first moment the signals of approaching trouble were exchanged, the men leapt to their action stations, and with their anti-flash gear and helmets clamped on, the gun crews fought off attack after attack. The sky and sea in Bomb Alley was patterned with shell and bomb bursts. The water boiled like molten lava, and the sky became pockmarked with acrid powder fumes and flying steel. Out of the sky came Stuva dive bombs. As Commander Kimmins told us, the Jerrys were sending in their first 11. JU-88s, torpedo droppers and bombers hurl themselves at the freighters, sailing stubbornly forward through a boiling sea, while their escort ships fought with every gun. Destroyers were always slipping about and shaking the convoy with depth charges. U-boats were being fought as well. In this hell at sea, 66 German aircraft were accounted for by our gunners and fighter pilots. Bloodshot and weary eyes scanned the awful scene as dusk fell. There was rarely a peaceful moment. For hour after hour, the gunners pumped streams of tracers at the constantly attacking aircraft. Shipping casualties were being sustained both among the escort vessels and cargo ships. In these brilliant excursions into a landlocked sea, ringed on all sides by the enemy, losses are bound to occur. But Malta must and will be supplied. This is how it's done. Nights afforded little rest. U-boats became more daring, bombers had still to be fought, and through it all the merchantmen ploughed their way towards Malta. The morning hours saw a scene to fill the hut. On battle-scarred ships, gunners, weary by hours of fighting, snatched a few minutes rest as the island's coastline loomed on the horizon. Another Malta convoy was coming in. Rear Admiral Burroughs, who commanded the light forces and close escort, went aboard HMS Nelson to visit Vice Admiral Seyfried at the close of operations. Britain salutes these gallant men. The men of the Malta convoy are at prayer, giving thanks to God for a safe deliverance from the perils which face those who serve at sea. <laughs> 